Hey guys, we're going to have a little video here about position, velocity, acceleration, and the relationships of those various graphs. Um, we talked about this a little bit in class, um, so you should be familiar, for example, since we talked about it in class, with the fact that if you have a constant velocity, like this, that would mean that you have zero acceleration. Because the derivative of velocity is acceleration. It also would mean that your position versus time graph would look like this because a constant velocity means a constant rate of change in position. Okay, now what we didn't get to was what maybe some of the other graphs might look like. And we kind of vaguely referred to it um, or rolled something down a slope. But if you had, say, a constant positive acceleration like that, what that would mean is that your velocity is increasing. So it might, say, look like this. If your velocity is increasing, then your position versus time graph will not be linear. It's going to be more than linear because the rate of change in position is uh, an increasing value, meaning it's, it, it's going to go something like this. That's supposed to be a parabola. Hopefully it is. Um, but recall this fact that I, I wrote down up here, right? The derivative of position is velocity. So that means that if you had a position versus time graph that looked something like this, if you, say, drew a tangent line at some point or other, right, the slope of that tangent line would correspond to the value of the velocity at that moment. Okay? So if you had numbers on this position graph here, all right, and uh, say um, this, you know, it's two here and one there, okay, whatever, and you, you draw your tangent line and you calculate that the velocity at one second is five, then that's what you would see over here on your velocity versus time graph. All right, now, what the homework is going to ask you to do is they'll give you some kind of a graph, and they'll actually put numbers on there. So let's make up something real quick. If we had velocity versus time, so this is going to be a V versus T graph, okay? Always take a moment to identify what type of graph it is, right? If this up here said not V but X, it would mean something completely different, okay? Because this is a velocity versus time graph, if I find the slope of this, that's going to tell me acceleration. On the other hand, if I found the area under it, that would tell me the displacement between two particular moments. Okay. All right. So let's let's put some numbers in here. Let's say each of these tick marks is going to be one second. All right. So one, two, three, four. Um, and how about five? 10. There we go. All right, and we can estimate values if we need to. Um, suppose you wanted to know, or they asked you, because they would, what is the acceleration? Now, some of the ones you're going to see on the homework, they'll give you a velocity versus time graph, and it'll go something like, you know, this, right? And so you'll have a changing um, acceleration, right? Sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's zero, like when it's flat, and sometimes it's negative, okay? But for this simple example here, um, I, I, I'm going to pick out two points, like let's say right there, there we go. There's a good point, and there's the origin. There's another good point. Um, it looks to me like, because this is kind of a crummy sketch, my, um, my, uh, that point has coordinates of 2 comma 6, right? So that means that my rise here would be 6, and my run would be 2, so based on this very rough sketch that I have, maybe the acceleration is going to be 6 divided by 2 would be 3 meters per second squared. If you're confused at all about what I did there, in simple terms, I found the slope. That's it. That's all I did. I found the slope. You've been finding slopes since Algebra 1, so that should be a pretty straightforward concept, right? So just find the slope of a velocity versus time graph, and that's going to give you the acceleration. Okay, 
On the other hand, let's suppose they asked for the distance that um, whatever this object is traveled between 0 and 2 seconds. All right, if they're asking for distance or displacement or something like that, then they're talking about the area. All right, again, you've been finding area of like a triangle for quite some time. So mathematically not hard. The key is just knowing that that's what they're asking you to do. Okay, so again, this is a velocity versus time graph. Since the integral of velocity is displacement, if I calculate this area using my area of a triangle formula, that's going to tell me how far it moves between 0 and 2 seconds. All right, and so fine, 1 half base times height, base is 2, height is 6, 1 half of that is going to give me 6, presumably meters. I know I didn't give any units here, um, but all right, 6 meters would be how far it goes between 0 and 2 seconds. All right, they might get all tricky on you, sometimes happens, and say, oh, uh, yeah, smart guy, what's the uh, distance that it travels between 2 and 3 seconds? All right, well, fine. They're just asking for, then, a different area. That would be just this area. All right, which I suppose, whatever, you could calculate it and go for it. I'm not sure I need to work that out with you right now. But just know that if you have a velocity versus time graph, the integral is going to be displacement, and the derivative is going to be acceleration. All right, let's explore another option. What if they give you a position versus time graph? All right, let's draw one. Oh, I'm still in blue. Uh, let's say that the position versus time graph is going to look like uh, maybe this. OK. Uh, if this is position versus time, then the slope is going to tell me the velocity. All right, And so, again, I could put numbers with this. It wouldn't be a hard thing. You can find slope, but you would know that over this interval, right, between uh, the origin, you know, t equals 0 and whatever that moment is, it's going to be moving in the positive direction because that is a positive slope. Over this interval, um, it's sitting there. Does everybody see that the position is not changing? Right? It, it's sitting there. So if I said, what's its velocity over that interval? You would say, well, the slope is 0. It, it ain't moving. Right? There it is, just sitting there. Whereas this last interval here, it, is, uh, it has a negative slope. And so that would mean a negative velocity. So moving in the negative direction. All right. So depending on the graph they give you, the slope and the integral are going to mean different things. Um, so pay attention to your axes. And um, as long as you get those calculus relationships straight and you pay attention to what it's a graph of that you're giving you, you should be able to figure out whether you know, the slope is an acceleration or a velocity. And you should be able to calculate it because, hey, you've been doing that since Algebra 1. Okay, so just tonight's homework, all they're going to ask you to do is find a slope or find an area, one of those two things. And as long as you can do that, then you should not have any trouble um, coming up with answers. All right, hope that was helpful, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.